over to the shop and pick up the band, alright? You want to ride? I need some quiet. They fix the brakes? Yeah. They work okay? Yeah, they're fine. Really? Really. Hey, do you want to be a little bit more careful with the stuff, please? Oh, yeah, sure. Hey, Brian. You want to take my cat, Stevens? Really? We got your traveler's check. Traveler's check's right there. Right. right. Yeah, we got something. Right. See? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Okay. Um, I spoke to Dad last night. You did? Yeah, he wants me to spend a couple of weeks with him, so I'm gonna drive to Los Angeles uh, after classes are over, if it's okay. Of course. <sighs> Gotta share the wealth, Ma. <laughs> well, uh -oh. Time to... Tom said uh, the pickup's slow and it loses power on the hill, so you've got to stick to the main roads as much as you can. Okay. Really? Okay. And he thinks you're going to need a new fuel pump eventually. Oh, that's great. Well, just drive slow. Yeah, look who's talking. Mr. Speedo himself over here. Hey, the thing is half mine, all right? I just don't want you to wreck it. Uh, I wish you were coming with me. Yeah, so do I. Honey, you got lots of time, so don't push, huh? Okay. Okay, Mom. You take care of yourself. See ya. Well, maybe I'll meet you at Dad's in August? Oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah. I want you to call me every day. Every day? I'll call you when I get to Boulder, okay? As soon as you get there. Bye-bye. Take it easy. She's all yours. <laughs> easy. Watch the hedge. Watch the hedge. You're OK. Take it easy, Brian. Bye-bye. So long. Bye, so long. sweetheart. Ugh. He'll be all right.
Ontario, huh? Excuse me? Ontario? Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to go camping there, you know? It's a neat place. Where are you going? Uh, Colorado. Oh. What for? Uh, I'm going on a summer writing program there. Oh. What kind of writing? Uh, you know, like, uh, short stories and stuff, basically. Oh. Put me in one, okay? Okay. <laughs> have to be a really short story, though. Beautiful. Um, look, I'm having a little trouble with the van. Uh, it's a fuel pump, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I'm waiting for the tow truck right now. Hey, guess what? Shannon says he's going to start me in the 100. It's great. Uh, is my home? No, not yet. Steven's out, too. It's just uh, me and the swim team. Oh, yeah? Mom's going to love that one. Look, um, I don't know how long I'm going to be holed up here, OK? So uh, tell her that I will call her tomorrow at her office. All right? 11 o'clock sharp. Can you tell her? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, I gotta go, because I don't want to waste any more time running up a bill, all right? Yeah, they're talking to me, right? <laughs> you got it. All right, take care, all right? Bye-bye. Hey, Mom. This is Brian. When did he get there already? No, he's in Nebraska. The van broke down. What? What happened? He doesn't know. He's waiting for the tow truck. A tow truck? Yeah, he said he'd call you tomorrow at your office at 11. Where in Nebraska is he? He didn't say. Well, didn't you ask? No. Mom, some of the guys are going. Bob, go. wait a minute. Didn't he leave a number? No, but he said it's not serious. break. What must that man be thinking? I have my adolescent girls group, I've got the couples group, and a full caseload. When am I going to have any time for that? Did Brian come I mean, he's our director. He should be standing behind us, not piling us up with more work. I can take one of your groups. Well, that's not the point, Joan. You're just as overloaded as the rest of us. Somebody's got to be out here telling him what the hell is going on in the real world. Well, I'll speak to him. No, not you. You're not angry enough. You need somebody to scream at him. Um, I'm not sure that'll help right now. So you'll talk to him? Sure. And don't worry, it'll work out. Well, give him hell. Jenna, are these all the messages? Uh -huh. Were you here the whole time? Yeah, except for my coffee break. Who was answering the phone then? Uh, that was Maria. Maria, did you take a message from my son? He didn't call. Hmm. That's not like Brian. No. No, Larry, he was supposed to call yesterday at 11, and he didn't. So we thought maybe he got in touch with you. No, he didn't. But I'm sure if anything happened, we'd have heard. Roads are jammed this time of year. It's practically impossible for an accident to go unnoticed. Do you think we should call the police? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think what probably happened is the uh, trouble with the van slowed him up. 
He's making a run for college and he'll call us as soon as he gets there. When do classes start? Tomorrow. He'll probably arrive sometime tonight. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Doesn't he call? Hello. Oh, hi, Larry. No, we haven't heard. I see. Yeah, I think you should. Okay, but you let us know, huh? Father's calling the Nebraska police. Outside. Didn't you hear the phone? No, who was it? Dad. He talked with the Colorado and Nebraska State Patrols. They have nothing on Brian. How could he just disappear? I'm gonna call a couple of the campgrounds. Brian said he was almost there, so he must have been close to the Colorado State border when he called. I don't know, that's all I can come up with. Well, I'll stay up with you. No, 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 no. We only have one phone line. Why don't you go to sleep? Okay, well, yeah, let me know if you find out anything. Mm -hmm. Come on, Bob, let's go to bed. Come on. Yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. It's early here, too. The reason that I'm calling is we thought he might have spent the night at your campground. Would you check, please? Yes, I'll wait. Anything? This is the last one near the Colorado border. Yes? I see. Okay, thank you. Maybe we should call the hospitals. Now, the Nebraska police would have notified us if anything had happened. Honey, why don't you get some sleep? I think we should go to the police. Oh, yeah. I can understand. I have a son, and he travels. My God. Some nights you don't sleep. But you know what? He always comes back. They always come back. How old you say he is? He's 19. 19. He'll come back. How do you know that? Well, it's uh, summer. He's a 19-year-old kid. He has a camper. He has, what, uh, $700 in traveler's checks? Well, that's not Brian. He would never just take off like that. Thing is, you don't know with kids. You just don't know. All we're asking is that you feed the information on Brian and the camper into the computer. Oh, you see, that's an international crime computer, and there's been no crime. Besides, he's only been unaccounted for for four days. So legally, he's not missing. Well, he's not at school. He was supposed to arrive in time for classes yesterday, and he didn't. Right, and that's not missing. It's got to be 30 days. 30? It's absurd. 
It's not even our jurisdiction. It's got to be where he disappeared from. That's where you've got to check. Nebraska. We did. We contacted the police there. They have nothing in their log. Right. So no crime was committed? There's been no accident report? I don't know what else to tell you, short of going there yourself. My God, where do we start? I can't understand it. Except for its pickup, the van was running perfectly. I mapped out Brian's route for him. I don't know what could have gone wrong. Stephen, listen to me. Stephen, all day yesterday, I made myself crazy, thinking, if I'd only been with you boys, this might not have happened. That's just not so. I would have patted Brian on the back. I would have sent him off just as you did. Dad, he wanted me to go with him. I told him he'd be Steven, all right. Steven, it's not your fault. It's nobody's fault. We're going to find Brian. He's traveling in a white VW van with Ontario license plates. No, I don't think I've ever seen him. How about the van? Have you seen the van? It's a 76. Not with Ontario plates, not in the two years that I've been here. Well, would you check your books, please? <laughs> look, mister, I don't have to. Well, look, it would only take a minute, OK? It'll take me shorter than that, because he never stopped here. Sorry. Sergeant Keyes. Uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Walker. I'm late for an appointment. Oh, I just wanted to talk to you for one minute. I, I know what you like, Ms. Walker. We've, we've been over this. Before we put a runaway kid on the computer, we Ryan have to... Ryan is not a runaway kid. Well, you filed statements with the police in Colorado and Nebraska. You contacted the school. I know. Maybe he has amnesia. I mean, he doesn't know where he is. Amnesia? What, what makes you think that he has amnesia? Well, I don't, but I'm just trying to think of something. I mean, maybe he was kidnapped. That's highly unlikely. Ransom calls usually come in the first 24 hours. All I'm asking is that you put him on the computer. I'm sorry, Ms. Walker, I'm late. Sergeant. Sergeant Keyes, I bend rules every day for kids that aren't my own. Now, I want to find my son. OK. Oh, OK, I'll, I'll do my best. And if I hear something, I'll be in touch. It's getting late. Why don't we hit one more place and then stop for the night? Oh, my God. Dad! What? What are you doing? Steven! It's Brian! Brian, where? He's up ahead. Steven, for... move out of the way! Come on! Steven, for God! Dad, look right there. There it is, see? Steven, those are Ohio plates. Those are Ohio plates. Why don't we leave here? Maybe the sergeant was right. Maybe we should have started out in Nebraska. Let's move over there. At least we know Brian was there. Remember, 
our trip to Cape Breton? God, how many years ago? Brian was... Brian could have been more than eight. Morning we got there. We walked out on the bluff. Mother, Brian, Rob. We looked out over the Atlantic. Brian was so sure he could see Iceland. <laughs> the Hebrides. Nothing could convince him otherwise. I just want to know where he is. If he's sleeping. Not a white van. Let me see that picture again, will you? Oh, no, he wasn't here. I'd recognize him. Hey, Bob. Bob. Who closed up last Friday? Uh, I wasn't in on Friday. Uh, Kevin was. All right. Uh, Kevin, uh, you closed up last Friday, hmm? Friday? Yeah, this young fellow looked familiar. Came in last Friday with a white camper. With Ontario license plates? You thought it might be the fuel injection? White? Yeah. No. No, I don't recall. But you closed up last Friday, didn't you? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Do you remember seeing this boy? No. No. Something happened? My son just disappeared. Oh, damn. Wasn't here. Pretty rough. Missing kid. Sorry. Jack it up, Harm. That's it. So I fitted the kid's cast to his arm. And I told him I'd have to wear it about a month. So all this time, his kid brother is standing there, looking at that cast as envious as all hell. And finally, he turns to me and he says, could you do something like that for me? <laughs> Dad, pull over. It's no use. I'm not going to find him. In regard to the traveler's checks you reported stolen on July 12th. We will need additional information. Will you please fill out the enclosed form and return it to us in the envelope? Ryan called them. Yes, we sent this letter addressed to Brian Walker. Who reported the check stolen? Well, Brian Walker. Where was he? I'm oh, sorry. Where did the call come from? I don't understand. My brother is missing. Pardon? Brian left home three weeks ago. Four days later, he called from Nebraska. We haven't heard from him since. Then we got this letter informing us that he had contacted you by phone. So what we want to know is, where was the call placed from? I'm sorry, ma'am. We can't give you that information. What do you mean? Well, it's private client information. We can't release it. Not without Brian's permission. But he's missing. Well, I'm sorry, but we have an obligation to our clients to protect the privacy of those clients. Can't you understand? We can't get Brian's permission because he's disappeared. 
Well, I admit your circumstances are unusual. But it is company policy. I am trying to find my son. I hear you, ma'am. But frankly, there's really... There is no way we can release that information, not without a court order. Fine. We'll get a court order. Thank you. I'm... I'm sorry. The order was denied. Why, for God's sakes? Because there's no reason to believe that a crime's been committed, and without evidence of a crime, the court will not compel disclosure. Did you explain to them? Yes, I did, exactly as you told them. But without sufficient cause, the court refuses. They feel it's outside their mandate. They can't presume that a law's been violated. I'm sorry. What is it? Brian's credit card slips. What? From gas stations in the Sioux, St. Paul, Omaha. This one's from Colorado. He did get to Colorado. Keensburg? I don't even know where that is. Where's the Atlas? outside of Boulder. But he never arrived at school. July 9th, Pueblo, Colorado. Well, now that's south, past Boulder. July 11th, Rush, I can't read this. Rush Falls, New Mexico. 17th, El Paso. Go on. Uh, July 18th, Cheyenne. Wyoming? There's one more, July 19th, Oakley, Kansas. Well, this is crazy. The van went south to Texas, then back up north, and now it seems to be going east. Yeah, we better make a list of these stops. Mom, this last set, these signatures. Look at the W. It's different from the others. Where? Here. See these loops? They're tighter. Brian doesn't make these tight loops. Well, you can't tell from a signature, honey. Yeah, but look at the way he closes out his A's. Well, maybe he signed him sitting in the car or standing outside. You know what it's like on the road. Mom, I don't think this is Brian's handwriting. You can't tell from a scribble on a credit slip, Stephen. Where are you going? Here's one of Brian's stories. Look at the signature. See these wide loops? And Brian always ends on an upstroke. Well, all right. Maybe he signed it when he was in a hurry. Mom, these are not his signatures. Somebody got a hold of his credit card. After Keensburg, Brian wasn't in the van. All I'm saying is we have to be prepared. We do not! Brian might be dead. How can you say that? From his signature? Yes, because if you look here, you will see... There's no proof. Is there? Is there? Sergeant Keyes. Oh, yes, Mrs. Walker. Um, I know that you said you'd call if you heard anything about Brian, but it's already August, so I thought I'd just check and see if anything's come up on the computer. Oh, 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 no. Look, uh, look, we've, we've really been swamped. What do you mean you've been swamped? Well, we've really been pressed, and I just haven't, haven't, haven't had a chance to. Are you telling me that his name is not on that computer? 
thank God, what do I have to do to make you people oh, understand oh, oh, my oh, son is yeah, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Get away okay. from me. Yeah, wait, 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 I want my son's name on that computer now. His name is Brian Walker. Sit down and put it on there right now. Well, let's go out. I am not leaving here until I get a printout with my son's name on it in my hand. Uh, you will, I promise Sit you. Sit down. If, just, if you're just, please. Brian Walker, I want it in my hand or I'm not leaving. Hello? Mrs. Walker? Yes? This is Sergeant Fraser with the Portland, Maine Police. Where? Portland, Maine. Mrs. Walker, did you report a 1976 Volkswagen camper missing? Yes. We have it. Had a hard time finding you. The van had Texas plates on it. Finally tracked you through Volkswagen in Germany. <laughs> we have the van. Where's Brian? Who? My son Brian, who is driving the van. Where is he? What bothered the hell out of me, why this camper with Texas plates was never reported stolen? Well, it was. Just took them three weeks to put it on the computer. It's often done that way. Whoever processed the information entered the Ontario license plate number, but not the serial number of the van itself. It took us a whole month to find you. The van has been here for a month? Well, it took us that long to chase you down. We talked to the FBI. We called out through the Midwest, Texas, went through local police agencies. But we always got the standard, well, we'll look into that and get right back to you. <laughs> of course, that could take 10, 12 years from now. How did the van get here to the other end of the country? Well, we picked up these two men driving it. They had tried to sell a stolen tape deck to a city councilman of all people. Here, Walker, please sit down. Uh, not very bright. Oh, who are these men? Locals. Uh, the younger one was put into a foster home. The older one, who had a previous stolen car charge against him, who got him in jail. Did he say anything about Brian? Well, his first story, which he's changed a few times since, was that he picked up the van in Colorado from a blonde, curly-haired kid. Oh, my God. That's Brian. He said that the kid gave him the van. Gave it to him? And then the kid disappeared. He never saw him again. Brian would never give him the van. He's lying. I know. Well, do you know these men? The one in jail, Earl Pike. He, um, he has a police record. Could he have killed Brian? Stephen, that doesn't make sense. Why would anybody kill somebody and then describe him to the police? It's in the compound out back. It's pretty messed up. <clears throat> Maybe you should let your son. I want to see.
go pull out a fine crane. So uh, tell mom we'll be back later. What the hell are you wearing? Huh? Who said you could wear Brian's sweater? Well, nobody. Well, take it off. Why? Take the damn sweater off. We don't go into other people's things in this house. What are you talking about? Brian lets me wear his clothes all the time. Well, not now. Take it off. Take no. it off that sweater! Take it off! No. Take it off! Steven, are you crazy? If Brian was here, he'd let me wear the sweater. That's just it. He's not here. Do you see him? Come here. Come here. Here. Take it off. No. Take off the sweater. No. Take off that sweater. No. No. Take it off. Hey, what? hey, hey, what's going on? Cut it out. What is this? He wants me to take the sweater off. I don't know what's going on around here. You tell me not to worry about Brian, everything's gonna be okay. And Stephen's acting like he's dead. Rob! Rob! What was all that? Huh? Oh, Stephen. You've been through a lot. We all have, honey, but... You know, we're closer than ever to getting some answers. No, we're not. I spoke to Fraser today. He said he turned the case over to the assistant district attorney two weeks ago. Some woman named Towler. Two weeks ago? Has she charged Pike? No. He's got to be near the end of his sentence. If he gets out, we'll never find out what happened to Brian. Thanks for coming to meet us. I have something to show you. Pike's criminal record. Car theft, assault and battery, breaking and entering. Arrested in Florida for grand larceny, 1971. Sentenced to two and a half years. Arrested the next year for robbery and assault. He got seven years for that. Grand larceny again in Alabama just two years later. He never served a full sentence. He was out committing two or three new crimes. This is Walker. Four days before Pike met Brian in Colorado, he was picked up in Pennsylvania riding in a stolen car. Now, the Pennsylvania police ran a computer check on him and found out that he was wanted here in Maine. But because of a limited budget, the state didn't spend the $200 it would have cost to have him extradited. If Pike had been extradited, we would have had him. He would have never met Brian. There's something else you should know. Pike's being released this afternoon. What? Thank you. There the elevator's right there. Miss Towler? Yes? I'm Stephen Walker. This is my mother, Joan Walker. I'm sorry, I was expecting you this afternoon. Is it true that Earl Pike is being released from prison this afternoon? Yes, that's right. Why, for God's sakes? There was nothing I could do. Look, I'm due in court in 10 minutes. Do you mind if we walk while we talk? Pike served the compulsory two-thirds of his sentence, and the judge granted him automatic reduction. On what basis? Good behavior. Good behavior? Do you know this man's criminal record? Of course I know. But under the law, he's entitled under to... Under the law? He stole my son's van. Can't you charge him with theft? We have no evidence. Well, how the hell do you think he got it? Let me explain something about the law in this country. First of all, when the van was picked up, Pike wasn't driving. Secondly, we have the burden of proof. So if there's another reasonable explanation for Pike having the van, such as your son giving it to him, he'd be thrown out of court. Well, where in God's name would he be right now? Who knows? For all we know, he could be picking strawberries. Strawberries? My brother could be in little pieces on some hillside 2,000 miles away from here, and you're letting his killer walk free. What's the matter with you people? Oh, listen to me. As soon as we slap Pike with a theft charge, his lawyer will demand a probable cause hearing in district court. And I can tell you now, the charge won't stick, simply because we don't have enough evidence for a conviction. Well, what about the driver of the van? Question him. We can't. Why not? He disappeared. What? He beat up the mother in his foster home and he took off. Miss Towler. 
We don't care about Pike. It's not Pike. But he's the only person who knows what happened to my son. Okay. What we can do is ask Pike to take a lie detector test. Perhaps we can arrange a meeting with him. A meeting? Have him talk to you. Tell you what he knows about your son. Maybe I can set that up. I'd have to call him and see if he agrees to it. We need his permission? There's nothing I can do. He's going to be a free man. He passed the polygraph test. Pike never saw your son. He'll be down in a few minutes. He's agreed to talk to you as a, these are his words, as a courtesy to you and out of concern for the family. You should know that he's been officially released and we had to warn him that whatever he says can be used against him. I'm sorry about what happened to your son. We don't know what happened to my son. Do you? No. This way. Mr. Pike, you're the last person that we know of that saw Brian. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I've never seen your son. But you described him. I've never seen him. How can you deny that? You have his van. Uh, I don't know about that, ma'am, because, see, I got the van from a guy named John. Who's John? John was the guy driving the van that picked us up. Where? Texas. When? You know, look, Fraser's got all this information. What day? July 8th. That's impossible. Brian called us on the night of the 7th from Nebraska, said the van had broken down. It couldn't possibly be in Texas by July 8th. You know, maybe it was the 9th. You know, I, I don't really remember. What uh, happened to this person, John? Uh, see, we run into a little problem in Nebraska. And what kind of problem? Uh, you know, he and Mason, they, they got into a thing. And John got mad, he took off. Left us the van. Left you the van? Yeah. I, mean, I, I didn't steal it. Did you know it was stolen? No. Uh, I know a little bit about stolen vehicles, too. This is a picture of Brian. Did you ever see him? No. Mr. Pike, did you kill my son? No. Hey, look, are we finished here? 
You know, because I got to I get going. I got to drive down to Connecticut, got to rent a new apartment. Listen, there's some things left from the van that weren't mine. It might be your son's. You want to go take a look? In the diner around the corner. You're not quite Mom, I'll be all right. Why don't you just wait inside? Steven! I've never been to Ottawa. Is it nice? Come on. Where's my brother? What did you do to him? Where is he? Where is he? That must be him. He's older than I expected him to be. Mr. Conway? Yeah. Stephen Walker? My mother, Joan Walker? Yeah, good to meet you. <laughs> I just made it. You know, after 15 years, you think I know enough not to mess with New Haven traffic at noon. Uh, there's, uh, there's a coffee shop down there. Why don't we go sit down? So, tell me, uh, how'd you get my name? Detective Fraser in Portland, Maine. Yeah. Well, I don't know why you chased all the way down here. Like I told you on the phone, there's no way I could take the case. Fraser, huh? He's a good cop. How do you know him? Well, I used to be a cop myself, 30 years, New York City. I come from an Irish Catholic family. I already had a brother who was a priest, so. Yeah, but in those days, it was an honor. It really was. I felt good about helping people. Did you read the material we sent you? Yeah, yeah, I read it. It's a damn travesty. We hope that it convince you to take the case. No, I can't, really. See, I'm working on something up in Syracuse, and uh, now I'm all jammed up. We did some checking. Pike's moved from Maine. He's living nearby in Hartford. Yeah, yesterday, his wife filed assault charges against him. Beat the hell out of him. How do you know that? I checked. Well, Mr. Conway, can't you just go up to Maine and speak to the district attorney and the federal prosecutor? <laughs> you know what people like that think of private investigators? You know what the cops think of PIs? They think I'm an adversary. They like to hang me. 
Even if you're going to help them with the case? Yeah, they don't want help. They spend that time on the phone making sure they don't get caught with their pants down. It's a waste of time going to me. Well, what would you suggest? Pie. <laughs> they, they make a terrific strawberry pie here. You know, my wife Olga's trying to get me to cut out desserts, but I sneak a piece of strawberry pie every once in a while. I mean, who wants to live to be 100? No, thanks. I'll just have coffee. No, me too. Your attention, please. There were two of them in that van in Portland. The younger one was put in a foster home, and he ran away. Nobody's even bothered to follow up on him. If you would just go there and look for him. The answer is in those traveler's checks. What do you mean? Traveler's checks. When was the last time you talked to the bank about them? A month ago. They have no record of the checks Can't being Can't be. They clear those checks in a matter of days. Something's wrong. We had them check the serial numbers through the computer and yeah. nothing came Nobody up. Nobody is going to steal checks, then not cash them. That doesn't make sense. See, they've got, uh, you've got credit card slips, you've got traveler's checks. Now, probably nobody's ever going to remember the credit cards, but traveler's checks. Now, sometimes people do remember them. Plus, these days, they got those, uh, those cameras, and sometimes they take pictures of people cashing the checks. You see, Pike says that he never even saw your son, but if you've got a picture of him with one of those checks in his hand, you know, bingo! There's your boy. That would be beautiful. I, and then maybe somebody saw him. See, then you're in business. You gotta follow through on those traveler's checks. But what if the checks were never cashed? I mean, what if Brian hid them or destroyed them or whatever? What then? And you're out of luck? Mr. Conway, I don't know what to do. I mean, people tell me that I should give up, you know, get on with my life. That Brian's dead. I don't know anymore. But if he is, I don't want him lying in some field. I want him brought home. Me. Yeah. Does an Earl Pike live here? What about? You Earl Pike? Yeah. Can I talk to you for a second? Sure. No, no, no. You got to go around. Yeah. It's, uh, it's about a van. Uh, a Volkswagen van? See, I'm an insurance adjuster. I work for Colonial Heritage. And boy, it's hot today. I'm running my tail off. Whew. You know, I get 30 bucks for each one of these contacts I make, and if I do you, I get 60 bucks. But in this heat, who needs it? I'm getting too old for this. Anyway, these people put in a claim for a thousand bucks on the van. It's, it's one of those nuisance cases, and I don't want to bother you with it, but I thought maybe you might know something about the van. Uh, some guy gave it to me. <laughs> the guy gave it to you. <laughs> I wish somebody give me a bad. Nice guy. <laughs> well, when I got to the van, it was uh, it was all torn up inside. I thought, you know, what happened? I thought maybe you might know. Yeah, it was all torn up when I got it too. Yeah. Hey, can I get one of those? Sure. Hey, hi. Yeah. Bring us down another beer. Did you hear this one? What do you call a 62-year-old prostitute?
Blank is our boy. What do we do now? No, you don't have to do anything. I'll handle it. I gotta get a look at those traveler's checks. Get them to run them through again. Okay. Bye. We ran those tapes through already. Yeah, but do me a favor. Look, I, I'm a suspicious son of a gun. It's my nature. I don't trust these gadgets. Run the numbers through again, will you? Yeah? Well, if you don't trust these gadgets, what's the point in me running them through again? Well, I'm guessing maybe it wasn't the kid that reported them stolen, but maybe the guys that took them. Happens all the time. Does? Sure. People think they can uh, get the money twice. Looks like they cashed five of them. Just get me the hard copies. There were three checks cashed in Colorado and two in Utah. So, will you go out there? Yeah, I'm flying to Denver first thing in the morning. Okay, well, well call me from there, huh? Okay. No. You say the kid's missing? Yeah. Possibly murdered. Now, what about this guy? Sure, you, <laughs> sure you'd remember him. Oh, <laughs> Look, uh, mister, we have, you know how many credit cards a day? Hundreds. Yeah. Besides, uh, most of the guys working here in the summer, they got back to school. OK. Sorry. Hi. Remember me? <laughs> Hi, Maggie. You're going to disappear right into that map if you're not careful. Oh, I know. Ever since Conway's been out there, it's like I'm more him than I am me. When I wake up in the morning, I don't even see what I see anymore. I see what I imagine he's seeing. He's my eyes and ears. Think I'm going crazy? <laughs> they were driving a, a white van. Uh, it's, uh, you sure you don't recognize either one of these guys? I mean, they don't look like somebody buying ice cream cone. No, Mom's not home. Yeah, well, tell her I'm down to my last lead. It's, uh, it's a motel about 60 miles from here. Tell her if that doesn't pan out, uh, I'm going home. Okay. Thank right. you. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking for somebody to cash some traveler's checks here back in July. Well, I wouldn't be able to help you with that. I, I didn't own the place back then. Uh, what about the former owner? Uh, do you know where he went? Ben Loader? Last I know, he was living in uh, Cross Keys. How far away is that from here? About 400 miles. You know where I might find him there? Yeah, south end of Old Post Road. You're not going to go all the way out there, are you? Take eight hours. All right. Mr. Loader? Ben Loader? What? Are you Ben Loader? Yep. What can I do for you? You, uh, you used to own the motel back in Fairmont? That's right. Do you ever remember seeing these guys back in July? No, can't say that I do. Please, look, it's very important. I, I just drove 400 miles. Take another look. Huh. You're talking almost three months ago. <laughs> My memory's not as good as it used to be. <laughs> Uh, anything else I can do for you? No. No, oh, thanks, anyway. Miss C. Levinson. 
Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm sorry to drag you all the way out to the airport, Mrs. Walker. It's okay. I went to every stop on the credit card list. I even, uh, I even tried the Vegas police. What did they say? They said there's a lot of missing kids out there. What do you recommend? Not wasting any more of your money. Money isn't important. Your husband have any ideas? He's doing all he can in Los Angeles, but it's a long way away. Oh, he just ran out of leads. What do I do? I think you've done it. What do I do now? Well, you've, you've contacted the police, the FBI, you've looked on your own. Your son's quit his job to search for the boy. You, you've gone to campgrounds, hospitals. You even hired a private investigator. Are you telling me to quit? Thanks for coming all this way. <gasps> Stephen, I completely forgot. Never thought I'd get stood up by my own mother. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, honey. Listen, maybe you better go without me, huh? It's not that great a movie anyway. We can just have dinner. Well, let me just finish here. Mom, you've already written to the hospitals. I know, I know, but I only heard back from about half of them. What's this about depression? Brian didn't have a history of psychological depression. Yesterday, I spoke to a hospital administrator. He said that they might look a little harder for a missing kid if they thought he had some kind of special problem or something. You know, depression was all I could think of. <sighs> you know, it's funny. I actually found myself wondering if it was wrong to lie. You'd be furious. Same thing I thought. Hello. Jim? Bob Jacobs. Look, Jim, we just punched out 10 more checks. What are you talking about? 10 checks were cashed back in July, and we just popped them out now. But didn't you know there were more checks? Look, don't ask me to explain it. Well, give me the states, huh? Utah, Colorado, Nebraska. Yeah, OK, Bob, um, listen, uh, do me a favor. Um, send me photostatic copies of those checks, OK? Yeah, express them up. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Olga, uh, where's Mrs. Walker's phone number? It's in her file, right in front of you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Olga? How would you like to go to Utah?
want to come in? No, no, I'll wait here. Come on, it's okay. No, you go on. I'll, I'll wait in the car. Turkey's good. Turnip's delicious. You look nice. Steven? Did I scare you? I felt like being in his room. Look what I found. What? Remember the watch she accused Rob of losing? Swore he'd never let him borrow anything again. Said he'd lose his underwear if it didn't have elastic. Found it in the bottom drawer of his desk. Still running. The sky's dark. It's gonna rain. Nah, it's not gonna rain. Spend the night here. We can check in. You said we had one more check stop. Yeah, but it's not for another 40 miles. Come on, we'll go for it. You don't like driving in heavy rain. Oh, it's okay. I'm having a good time. How close are we to Nebraska? About 25 miles. We gotta get to the Julesburg Motor Works. Brian cashed four checks there. Eighty dollars worth. Yeah. Could have been the place where he had the repair work done. Oh yes, it's so good, so good. Oh yes. Yeah, nice. I think we just got lucky. Come on. <laughs> Right. It's not in the book. They weren't here. Yeah, but they were towed here. The uh, the guy said they brought them in about seven o'clock, uh, Friday night, uh, just before you were closing. They weren't here. I'm telling you. Look, you checked the books yourself. There was no work done on a VW camper. Yeah, but the tow man said that they. they the guy brought... made a mistake. What can I tell you? We gotta close. I bet you that's the law.
Excuse me, folks. FBI, Agent Drake. Jim Conway, this is my wife, Olga. Ma'am? How do you do? What uh, brings you here, Mr. Conway? A little investigative work. Who for? Family in Ottawa. A kid named Brian Walker's been missing for a while. We're active on that case, Mr. Conway. Oh, that's good to hear. We've already talked to the people here a couple times. What'd they tell you? He wasn't here. Yeah, that's what they told me. We checked a couple other places he might have stopped. A repair shop, motel. To tell you the truth, I don't think the boy was ever anywhere near North Platte. Well, I don't know. That's, uh, that's what I came here to find out. We can handle whatever's necessary on this end, Mr. Conway. Not much point in duplicating our efforts. Well, I guess you fellas know your business. We try. Good talking to you. Same here, ma'am. Have we just been told to get out of town? Guy was lying. Who? Guy at the service station. Why would he lie? I don't know. But if Brian was here and it was late, he had to stay someplace. Someplace around here. Where are you going? Check the register. You already did. No, no. Motel across the road. Oh, now. Come on, Jim. It's late. Let's get to bed. You can check it out in the morning. Okay. What did you say that date was? July 14th. Here, do you mind? Oh, well, that was over four months ago. I don't know if I'd remember. We have a photograph. Jim, where are the photographs? Here. Oh, my, yes, I remember him. Here it is. Brian Walker. Oh, my God. Yes, we had a long talk. He told me all about his family. Now, please, this is very important. Was there anybody with him? Now, that I don't remember. Jim, it says he paid for three people. Do you remember the other two? Please. I'm afraid I don't. Was it either one of these two? I don't remember. But I remember the boy. He was very polite. I believe he said he was from Canada. Anything else? Well, he mentioned he had some trouble with his car. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stop jerking me around. What are you talk. The boy was here. No, he wasn't here. I just come from the motel across the road. The kid spent the night across the road. That means the van was here. I got the guy who says he put it here. The motel has the kid's name on the register. The woman over there says she talked to him. What are you going to tell me now? I'm crazy? I don't have him down. He's not in the book. Because you pocketed the money, right? The boss wasn't around. You did some fast juggling. Now, to save your own butt, you could be hiding a murderer. OK? Now, what do you want to tell me? So? He was here. These guys with him? Yeah. This one, this ugly creep. I got into an argument with him. What about? He wanted me to fix the van that night. I told him it's closing time, take a hike, and he went crazy. You remember the kid? Yeah, I remember him. Looks scared. I think he wanted to shake these guys, but he didn't know how. I felt sorry for him. I wanted. I, wanted, I don't know, I wanted to say, run, kid, run like hell. 
Why didn't you? And then a week later, when his old man and his brother came by, I figured, whatever happened to the kid, it's over now. Not much good I could do. How much money did you pocket? Forty bucks. Kid was here. Had the van repaired in the shop down the road. Who says? The guy who repaired it. Like hell. I was in that shop. Didn't go on the books. Kid pocketed the money. Didn't want to admit it. You mind if I use your phone? What for? Call your office in Connecticut. Kid spent the night in the motel right here. I checked out half a dozen motels. Yeah? Well, you missed the one down the street. Agent Cameron, please. Agent Cameron, FBI. Yeah, Jim Conway. Listen, you can bring in Pike and Mason. I put it together. You sure you got enough? Yeah, but let me question them, okay? Why should I do that? Because I got the leverage. I don't care what you do after that. Just have them there first thing in the morning. Well, they'll be here first thing. OK, bye-bye. Now I got to tell the family. It's over. Did you find him? I put Pike and Mason and your son together in a repair shop in North Platte, Nebraska. Are you sure? Yes. Do you know where my son is? We'll find that out from Pike. You didn't actually see Brian. Mrs. Walker, they were together. Pike and Mason took the van from him. They used his credit card. Yeah, but you didn't actually see him. They cashed his traveler's checks. Yeah, but isn't it possible that... No. We wrapped it up. What do you mean? They confessed. Who confessed? Pike and Mason. You were going to wait for me. Oh, we took care of it. Like hell. You could have blown it. No way. We were about to pull in Mason anyway. What are you talking about? 
We tested the stolen traveler's checks for prints two weeks ago. Masons were on them. Two weeks ago? Why didn't you bring them in then? Didn't get around to it. Isn't that an amazing coincidence? You had those prints for two weeks. You waited until my phone call before you brought them in. The Bureau has its own priorities, Mr. Conway. You sat on your hands for four months, and now you want the credit for breaking the case. That's your priority. I don't even think you ran those checks. I think you're a liar. This is uh, Agent Cameron, uh, Stephen Walker. Good to meet you. I'm glad we could wrap this thing up for you folks. Can we talk to Pike? No. No, no, no. We're taking a statement from him right now. Will you folks take a seat? into the kid in the side of the road, his van had broken down. He was waiting for a tow truck. I said we'd help him if he could give us a ride to Colorado. You know, we didn't want to take him. I mean, we just wanted his money, van, traveler's checks. Figured when he got to Colorado, crossed the border, we stopped for gas, we'd get him then. When we stopped, the kid took his traveler's checks into the gas station with him, so we had to wait. Then we were getting close to Boulder, to where he was going to drop us off. We had to do something. Right? Yeah. We had to get rid of him. Well, I'm going up to Boulder, so I guess uh, this is where I can let you off. Uh, thanks to the ride. Sure. Hey, God, hey, on the That was pretty stupid because someone was going to find him. He'd talk. They'd get us for kidnapping. Down there to find him. Look over there.
Mason and I, we got in an argument about what to do with him. I and mean, should we get rid of the kid, ditch the van, keep the van? You could identify us, you know? I know the penalty for kidnapping. Same as it is for murder. Where was Brian during this time? He was in the back, tied up. He was listening? Yeah, I guess he was. <laughs> now it's getting pretty late. We were running low on gas. We couldn't take a chance of stopping anywhere with the kid in the van. So, we had to do something. So we killed him. Killed him. So we killed him. So we killed him. Confess to the murder of your son. Did he say where Brian is? Gave us a general location. Can we go get him? Well, we phoned the authorities in Colorado. There's a heck of a snowstorm up there. What? It's snowing. It'll be a while before they can get some men up there to go search. I want my brother brought home. Ah, uh, Stephen, right now. Look, I want my brother brought home now. Well, there's no way they'll go up and look in the middle of a snowstorm. Hey, I don't care if it's snowing. I want to brought up now. Stephen, I understand how you feel. No, you don't. I don't believe you understand how he feels or how I feel or how anyone feels who's been through something like this. And what I don't understand, what I'll never understand, is why nobody lifted a hand to find Brian or the men who killed him. We found your son, Mrs. Walker. I found my son. I and Stephen and this man found my son. Our Nebraska office put a lot of time in on this. We processed the traveler's checks. I believe we did our job. We did your job. All you people did is come up with reasons why nothing could be done. And you didn't give a damn about Brian. The man who killed Brian is in the next room in my custody. I find little comfort in that. All I want now is to be able to bury my son. <laughs> 